Today on Handy Dad TV, we're talking home security. And specifically, I'm putting in an alarm system and I wanna show you the process I go through to figure out where the vulnerabilities are and where I wanna place the sensors. That's coming up. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the, in the house. <laughs> your virtual dad in the cloud. And today we're talking about alarm systems. I've actually never had an actively monitored alarm system. I've always had dogs, so I never thought I needed it. And then five years ago, there were some break-ins in my neighborhood and a little too close to home, a little too close for comfort. So we installed a surveillance system that I could monitor on my smartphone. And then several months back, I heard about one of my neighbors getting broken into and she had a surveillance system as well. The burglars walked right by the cameras and the video footage allowed the police to capture those, the criminals, but it didn't matter. They still got into the house and they still burgled it. So that got me a little freaked out, started me down the path of thinking, hmm, I might wanna look for an alarm system at some point. And I was looking for one that I could find that was really good DIY, and I think I found it. But that's not what we're discussing today. Today we're just talking about what I'm going to do to plan out my system. And I think you'll find this process helpful in looking at the vulnerabilities in your own home. So let's take a look. So the first thing I did was obviously plot out my house. And it's not necessarily to scale. I didn't measure it out. I just kind of drew the shapes. And I used the motif of kind of showing with the shading where the separate areas are. So the main house is uh, this part is two stories and this part over here is only one story. It has the family room and the two car garage on it. Of course, I have the driveway goes out to the street, which will be over here. The front entry is right in the middle of that two story. It's a two story colonial. And I added a sum room off the back. We have a shed as an outbuilding and of course the pool in the backyard as well. And the gray areas are concrete. So that's really my motif. All right, so one of the first things I did was look at the security lighting that I have. I only consider security lighting things that are on from dusk to dawn or motion sensors. And so that's what I plotted out here. So for example, I have, I have lights by the front door and a pole light out here. They are on a sensor that just goes on dusk to dawn. Same thing with the light around the back, dusk to dawn. And the one on the shed and over the garage and over the sunroom, those are motion sensor lights. So they're still security lights, but they're motion sensors. Now, you're probably asking why are some of them yellow and some of them red? Well, that's a good question. The red ones are low enough that you don't need a ladder to reach. So they're really not good security lights. Somebody could just walk up and unscrew the light bulbs on any of these. If they really wanted to pick the lock on the back door, they could walk up and unscrew that light bulb and they'd have time in the dark without ever setting off this light, depending upon how they come in. The next step is looking at access points. So that is all the doors and windows that are accessible from the first floor. That could be the basement as well. I didn't really think about the second floor, although there might be certain circumstances. If you keep, for example, a ladder in the shed, if somebody could get on top of the sunroom easily enough, they could get into a second floor window. So that might be something to consider as well, but that's kind of like an advanced topic. For now, I'm just looking at the access points that I can get to. Now, as far as the colors go, I put yellow or red, the red ones being the higher risk, okay? Meaning areas that are not well lit or things that are easily accessible. So the yellow is a lower risk. So for example, the front windows, these are bay windows on either side of the door and the front door itself, I don't consider those really high risk because they're facing the street and there's no plants or anything blocking that view. And that would be really hard. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody in my neighborhood being broken in through their front door. Typically what happens around here is they, somebody comes and knocks on the front door to see if nobody's home and they would go around back and they would break in through some other way. So I see that as low risk. Same thing with the garage. Although I do have tall trees in front of my garage windows, which I really have to rethink because 
that's not good. Somebody could easily, especially at night, climb through one of those windows and be blocked by those those uh, big bushes there. But I still consider those low risk because there's another door on the inside. Now the door on the inside I consider a high risk because somebody could work on that without ever being detected. They're working in a closed garage and nobody would ever see them. So that is more of a high risk to me. Over here on this side, there's no windows on the first floor, but there are windows in the basement down below here. Those are pretty small, but somebody could kick one in and get into the basement, get into the house through the basement. The sunroom has three windows along the back and stairs. Um, I shouldn't say three windows. This is a slider and two windows on either side. They are low enough that you could, if the window was unlocked, somebody could walk right through because there's steps right here. On this side, for example, these windows I put is yellow because you'd have to climb onto furniture and whatnot to get into them. Certainly doable, but less of a risk. I would think somebody would go through the sunroom this way. Over here, there is a landing by the back door, and there is a window along the side that you could step right through if it was unlocked or if they wanted to break their way in. The family room has a bay window around the back as well, and it's certainly a, a high risk because that's secluded in the back there and nobody would see them working. Is your home as safe as it could be? Are your loved ones protected? Get my home security guide and find out. So here I zoomed in a little so you can see better. And we're going to talk first. I want to make sure that I get all of the red ones covered. That's that's really what the way that I looked at it. And what do I mean by that? Well, the first thing, the easiest, is to put contact sensors on the doors. That is probably the most important thing because even if somebody breaks in through a window, odds are they're not going to be able to take your big screen TV out the window. They're going to want to go through a door. And so that would set off the alarm. Now, of course, that may happen on their way out of the house. So it might not be, you know, as useful as you would like it to be. So the best thing to do is to catch them before they actually take the screen off the wall. So the first thing I would do is put on door sensors, though. And the door sensors, and the annotation that I did here is I turn them blue when I have them protected. So here you can see I need four door sensors. Now there is another door, an interior door here, that I could put the sensor on. But if I do that, the problem is I leave that door open for usually about three seasons of the year until it's really cold outside. There is a separate heater out here, but there isn't separate air conditioning. So I usually leave that door open several times, uh, you know, most of the year. And so I really want to put the sensor on the slider instead of that interior door. I don't want to have to close that just to secure the house. So that's good for door sensors. Now there's an awful lot of windows here that are still vulnerable. And I don't necessarily want to pay all the money that it would take to put sensors on all of them. So an easier way to handle that would be to use motion sensors. You can strategically place a motion sensor, for example, out here in the sunroom, so that if somebody does break in through any of those windows, it still will see them. And the same thing is true of my basement, where these basement windows are. I don't have to necessarily put sensors on every one of those windows, although I could. It depends on your individual needs, but this is what I'm going to do. So. What I did is I figured that I could use three motion sensors. I'd, I'd put one out here in the sunroom. I'll put one in the family room. And this dotted one over here is actually in the basement. And the reason for that is because these, remember, these three windows are actually in the basement. They're vulnerable points, but they're in the basement. So now when we look at the coverage, you can see I've got all my red covered. And I really only have the yellow in the front of the house. Now, some of you may say, well, Chris, why bother with the contact sensors? Why not just get a system that has all motion sensors? Well, I would say like this, motion sensors are more susceptible to false alarms. And I'm really sensitive to that. I don't want false alarms because I don't want to bother my neighbors. I don't want the police coming. I just don't want the stress of it. So I'm going to limit 
where I use them and how I use them. And I'm also going to test them out to make sure they work with my pets. So this is a this is a tentative plan to see. Wow, would it would I, if I put a motion sensor here and let it go for a week, will it actually get set off by my dogs by their normal activity? That's what I need to verify. Plus, there's one other thing to think about, and that is there's different ways to arm an alarm system. You can arm it that you're away, which means every sensor is active, but you can also arm it when you're home, either sleeping or just home and want to be protected. You don't want the motion sensors to be activated when you're home because you want to be able to move around your own home without setting them off. But the system would be enabled for the doors even if the motion sensors are off. So that's another consideration. And think about it, if you just had motion sensors in your system, you wouldn't be able to ever set it while you're home. Something to think about. Bottom line is you really have to go through this kind of an assessment for your own home. Just go to draw.io and start plotting out your home and look for the vulnerabilities. Take a look around your house, look at your windows, your doors, Think like a burglar and say, if you really wanted to get into your house, how would you do it? Because odds are they're going to think the same way. They're going to find the vulnerabilities and they're going to exploit them. That's the whole purpose of having an alarm system is to protect yourself. So look for those red spots and make sure you get them covered. So I'm looking at the four door, the door sensors and three motion detectors is really what I need to secure my house the best. And so that's my plan. Now the next step is to actually buy it. Visit my website handydad.tv for more great ideas and information. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when new videos are posted.